Jetzt passt der Vasol, Baby. Come on in. Welcome to the Amityville Retrospective, a side story of the Scream Until You Like It podcast. I am your host, Ryan, and with me is... Nicole. And... Clint. So there you go, Clint. So many flies, Myers. And I'm going to take this opportunity to announce, I'm very excited about this, uh, Nicole has done the opposite of what I thought would happen, um, especially after Amityville 2. <laughs> I thought I was going to be alone for this one. Uh, Nicole has officially agreed to become the official second half of the Amityville Retrospective. So, so moving forward. You're stuck with me, Ryan. <laughs> so moving forward, you can guarantee that you will at least see the two of us trying to get through this shit show of a fucking filmography. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> so tonight we are talking about a very very special movie in the franchise this is the one that i really feel basically cemented this franchise into mediocre at best territory um it does not get any better from here it gets sillier but it does not get any better uh, i am of course talking about amityville 3 or as some people know it who are lucky enough to see it in theaters amityville 3d uh, this movie came out in 1983, and it kind of was that 80s wave of uh, 3D. Like, we recently had another 3D resurgence. Uh, basically, we can thank James Cameron for that. But... Um, it gives me headaches. I can't do... Can you guys do 3D? It gives me a headache. Um, I was never very good with the red and blue glasses, but, like, modern 3D... As long as I relax and I don't overfocus on the screen, because I have a tendency to do that, um, I can avoid getting a headache. Nicole, I'm I'm the same way. the The old school blue and red glasses always give me a headache. But the way things are now, uh, like when I saw my bloody Valentine 3D in the theater, it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> it was fantastic. Really? So yeah, I'm good with with modern 3D. Yeah. Okay, I'm alone on this. Literally every 3D movie I've gone to, after 20 minutes, I'm sitting in the theater. I'm the only one not wearing glasses. Oh, Can't do it. It gives me a freaking headache every time. And the movie looks like shit, by the way. If you're not wearing the glasses, that's true. <laughs> it does. It does. Oh. And, it, and it becomes a radio show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Ah, oh, James Cameron. God damn it. So, anyway, Amityville 3D. Warning. This time you'll be inside the world's most terrifying house. Amityville 3D. BG. Now playing at a theater near you. Amityville 3D tells the story of a reporter that moves into the Amityville house in defiance of the supernatural events connected to it and finds everyone around him besieged by the this. Let me tell you, this synopsis fucking slaps. It's using like 25 cent words. <laughs> besieged Boy. by the evil manifestations which are connected to a demon presence in the basement. My God. It's a man out! That's, yeah, I guess that's basically it. Amityville 3D stars Tony Roberts as John Baxter, Tess Harper as Nancy Baxter, Robert Joy as Elliot West, the, what was he? He was a paranormal Parapsychologist. investigator. Parapsychologist. Yeah. That's a real thing. Um, we had, where the 
frick are the damn you IMDb? As if they put these people way down here. There she is. Lori Lawhon as Susie. I don't know if I said her last name right. As Susie Baxter and Meg Ryan as Lisa. Meg Ryan got tertiary billing in this. It was fucking nuts. Yeah. Yep. Well, this is before her uh, major, major roles like uh, when Harry met Sally. Yes! Oh! 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 Oh, God! Oh! I'll have what she's having. I was say, it's before she had the orgasm in the diner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> her rom com queen. That's right. That's right. Rom com queen to yep. this day. That's what hurled her into the stratosphere. <laughs> So I hurled her into my stratosphere. Uh, <laughs> uh, before we get talking about the movie, though, as always, we just like to kind of hang back and actually talk about movies that actually made us feel good. Or maybe not, but at least it's a different movie than this one. Um, we start with the What You've Been Watching segment. And uh, since Clint is our... I didn't introduce Clint. You kind of did. Um, Jesus, I said hi to Clint. Sorry, this is Clint, by the way, our special guest and one of the grand pappies of the scream until you like a network. Uh, Clint, you want to say a little bit about yourself since I completely disregarded you? Oh, it's quite all right. Um, um, it, you know, I, I'm still relatively new to the game myself. I mean, uh, I haven't even been podcasting for two years. I mean, uh, previously from the uh, Hamityville Horror Podcast, now with the brand new review podcast, uh, Scream Until You Like It, and we're actually starting to pick up interviews now. Um, we're expanding the network that we have. So it's like um, now we've got uh, interviews uh, on there that we're going to add to that playlist. We've got your Amityville retrospective, and we've got our main our main movie review thing, which is kind of the thing that we have the most fun doing. So, um, yeah, me, Mike Mazzy, uh, that's the two main, but uh, we got a lot of friends, so you're going to see most of them, including you guys. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. So as far as movies that I've watched recently um, that did not really include you guys, or maybe some of it did, um, I haven't been watching a lot lately because I was, I've was i been like prepping for other things that we're doing like this. So I'm not even going to count this movie, even though clearly I watched it. Um, I, um, I watched um, an indie film recently uh, called Body Count, uh, which Jen Nangle made that. Um, and we... We recently talked to her. We put out an interview just yesterday. Um, and I also watched uh, The Ruins. I don't know if anybody's yeah. seen that. One. Nicole, I know you've seen that. Yes. Uh, actually, yeah. actually, we watched that one together, I think. Mm -hmm. um, with Mike the other night, uh, he wasn't feeling like concentrating on anything. So he's like, let's pick some old 50s creature feature or something. And uh, we ended up watching Forbidden Planet. Um, and, um, I only picked it because of the, the name and the artwork. Um, I didn't realize when I had selected it that a very young Leslie Nielsen was in that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and, and, uh, it's the Robbie, the robot movie. Holy shit. It's like, I, um, I had no idea. So this was like pre lost in space, like, uh, stuff mm -hmm. like, like all movies had like a weird looking robot at one point, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, it's kind of weak. It wasn't like an awesome movie or anything like that. But I mean, certain aspects of it were cool, um, like some of the backgrounds that they that they made, which were probably just like painted backdrops or something. But it looked mm -hmm. really good. Um, and I attempted to get through one that I had seen only once before. Um, and I have to go back and take another run at it because I, I gave up on it uh, after about 20 minutes. Videodrome, mm. that old, that old wow. uh, James Woods, mm. you know. Um, oh, geez, Blondie, right? Yeah, Blondie was in it. Um, it's um, it's another one of those body horror movies. Oh, Jesus, why can't I ever think of the director's name? Oh, you Cronenberg. Know, yeah, Cronenberg. Yeah, like, yeah, he's uh, the things that he's known for. Yeah, and uh, that that struck me that this basically took place in. Toronto. So um pronounce Toronto. Toronto? Toronto. You don't pronounce Toronto. the T. You don't pronounce the second T. Toronto? Toronto. 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 A Toronto. Anyone want to corroborate that or say anything different? It's okay. Toronto with the second T. All right. Toronto. And I say Toronto. Okay, so we do have the second T. 
Toronto, is it? Nailed it. Uh, Toronto. Montreal. <laughs> okay. Well, excuse me for for my my American inflection there. Um, <laughs> so that <laughs> that's uh, that's it in a nutshell. It's basically what I watched. So uh, some good, some not so good. And that's a solid watch. List. I didn't finish. <laughs> that's a good chunk of movies. Yeah, it's all right. Nicole, what you been up to? Ah, uh, last night I um actually had a really good time. The movie wasn't good, but the con- <laughs> the concept was nothing I had ever done before. I know theaters do mystery movie nights where all you get is the rating and the runtime, and it's always a movie that has not been released yet. And I went to one at my local theater. Uh, my AMC was doing something called Unseen Screams. And it's a mystery movie night, but it's horror. So that was really, really exciting. You're going into the theater and you have no idea what you're going to see. You only know it's a movie that has not been nationally released. And we saw Out of Darkness. And I found out that this movie had been on the shelf for two years. And I understand why. (laughs) Because it was god awful. I did not consider it horror. But... The whole concept of the mystery movie night was with just a horror movie was really cool. It was. It was a lot of fun. Did you see anything yeah. else? Uh watched a lot of foreign films uh this past week, getting ready for the hangout Saturday. Oh yeah. Uh yeah, yeah. Some I, I wish I hadn't. Um, but there were some good ones. There were some really good Shudder is is just an untapped mm-hmm. gold mine. Of foreign horror, especially yeah. Korean horror. I love Korean horror. And um, yeah, one one cut of the dead was one of the best I've seen in a while. It really was. Mm. I meant to bring this up at the hangout, but uh, I didn't get a chance to. Um, did you know there's a sequel to One Cut of the Dead? No, I did not. Well, it's I can't remember if it's a sequel or a prequel, but it's a short film. Um, basically... As you know, the movie became popular. Um, they were doing some post-production stuff. I think it was. They had a little bit of extra money because they realized the movie was going to be a hit, and they just filmed mm-hmm. like a quick little. I think it's 25, 30 minutes, but it adds to the story of One Cut of the Dead. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out. Apparently, it's it's uh, apparently the quality of it is right up there with the actual main movie. But you do need to have seen the movie for anything of, for that to make sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I would definitely recommend seeing the movie. I've heard nothing but great things about it. I have it's, never seen that myself. Because <laughs> it starts off as scary zombie movie, and it ends as a comedy. So it's yeah, it it takes you. It's a roller coaster of a ride. It's fantastic. No, it's definitely been on my list. I just I got uh, like when did one cut of the dead come out? That came out in like 2019, 2020? Uh, I think I still have it on my list. 2017. Okay, even earlier. Um, I was just going to say, because it's funny, because I was going to say, right around 2016, I kind of got burnt out with zombie movies. Right. Um, Like, I was a diehard zombie fan as a kid growing up. Like, I was the guy that had, like, the clamshell VHS tapes of, you know, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, yep. uh, Zombie. I fucking love zombies. But it's because it's because they were niche. Like, there wasn't a ton of them. And then Resident Evil came out. And all yeah. of a sudden, everybody had a fucking zombie movie. And for a while, I was fucking on board. I was like, zombies. Yeah. Yep. And then it just kept happening. And I eventually, I guess it's like superhero fatigue now with the Marvel and DC universe. Mm-hmm. I just kind of, and but unfortunately, like it sounds, one cut of the dead included, it sounds like there's been a lot of great movies that I might have slept on because I just got so tired of the zombies. Yeah, um, yeah. It took me forever to go back to Train to Busan and uh, Anna and the Apocalypse. Mm. Train to Busan. Busan. One of my favorites. Yeah. There was one other foreign film that you just recently watched, and I was actually quite surprised about your reaction to it. I had to ask you about it. So you saw Inside, the movie we talked about at the last uh, episode, actually. Yes. And it did not bother you. Not really. As much as it bothered me. No, not at all. The, the the final scene on the stairs.
I cringed. I did. That that was that was rough to watch. It also it reminded me of Panic Room. Oh yeah. yeah. Seventy percent of the movie, she's in the bathroom, and that's she it. Is? Yeah, and it's like okay, and then the end. And a spoiler alert. Um, I honestly, I was giggling through most of it. I thought it was funny. He, <laughs> the cop at the end of the movie, the cop gets up. We think he's dead. He gets up, walks over to the breaker box, and turns on all the lights, but he has both of his eyes poked out. How did he find the breaker box with no eyes? I mean, come on. Well, power. <laughs> And um, why? And why did he care about the lights being? Why on? did he care about the lights being on if he doesn't have any eyes? <laughs> <I can't. laughs> no, and I think that was my like that. that was my I, biggest problem. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you're fine. Fine. Um, I understand why some people would have trouble watching it. Um, I would not recommend anyone who is expecting to watch this movie. Uh, <laughs> you know, because just because of that final staircase scene. The villain in this movie, I thought it was Famke Jensen at first, mm. but she looks just like her. I mean, she's a beautiful, beautiful woman. Um, it, it, I wouldn't watch it again, but I'm glad I did see it one time. Yeah, the aerosol can. I was I was hysterical with that when that happened. <laughs> it did the movie. It didn't bother me at all. But see, and I'm in agreement until that staircase scene. I'm quietly judging you. Like, I'm, I was, when I the one time I've watched it, I was having a good time with it. I'm like, yeah, like, you know, you're a badass bitch. You're fucking, like, owning this, who must be supernatural, because the shit they put that woman through, she should be fucking dead. Yeah, um, yeah. But that staircase scene to me was so out of place in what was otherwise it was. an over the top gory movie that was just take having fun. And it just, my stomach sank so fucking hard. Yeah. It, it was like Sam Raimi directed Panic Room. And then at yeah. the end, you get like the mist. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like, and well, it wasn't even that. Jesus Christ. It wasn't even that. It was, I don't even know how to describe it. Was, it was like the sadness almost. Like you sit there and you're like, oh God. Like you, you're, I've never you, seen that. <laughs> like your stomach is, is in knots. And you, like you got, your stomach is doing flips watching this movie and you just want to turn it off. You know? But I just, I thought it was comedic. I really did. No, and it, it is right up until, like I said, that ending is just. Yeah. I mean, her, her what, homemade tracheotomy. Come on. Re really? <laughs> the most unrealistic movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I have to say, I'm this is all going to get edited out. I apologize. That <laughs> I'm leaving it all in. Scene, <laughs> okay, good. Uh, did you ever watch any of those I, on fa like Facebook and YouTube, um, the candy making videos? Yeah. When they, and how they roll out the candy and then chop it. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, after they put the color in, and they're mm -hmm. separating the colors with the scissors. Mm -hmm. That's what went through my mind when I saw that scene. <laughs> was cutting the candy. In one of those videos. That was the first thing that came into my head. Because that's what I, it looked like. <laughs> I'm going to take your word for it. I can't remember. Like I said, this, this movie came out about 20 years ago. And that's the one and only like time I could, saw it. You could tell it was a piece of rubber. Like you, it, it didn't. Yeah, it did not look realistic at all. Uh, Clint, Coming you've from seen someone this. who's had a C-section, it did not look <laughs> Jesus <at> Christ! <laughs> I, I have not seen this, but I have seen a C-section. So, um, yeah. If it didn't I've look as two. bad as that, then I think I could probably handle it. Well, the fact that she she didn't have an epidural, obviously, she was feeling the whole thing. So clearly, yeah, yeah. Uh, clearly, yeah. <laughs> the ending's just flooding back to me now. I'm just kidding. yeah. I just thought of that Australian guy making candy and cutting the yeah. I'm gonna have to take a that's what it looked like long, long shower after this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
No! 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 <laughs> You're gonna have to put a clip of the candy making in this. <laughs> oh, that's all that's going in because I already put clips from the movie in the last episode, and I am not including that fucking ending. In this, so. <laughs> <laughs> that ending can rot in hell. Um, like if you, if I had to choose right now, if you're like, if you've either got to watch Old Yeller, The Mist, or Inside, I'm choosing the other two any day of the week. I don't. Well, I'm choosing The Mist. I mean, that's one I, of the greatest movies ever made. <laughs> the ending is so dark. Though. It's, it's so great. It's so great. I love it. And this one wasn't that dark. I mean, the baby lived. <laughs> <sighs> that's been our episode on Amityville 3 <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god oh, any other movies you wanted to bring up <laughs> I, I, I'm doing animal attack movies this week that's that's my mm. my uh, schedule I've been I'm going to be doing a whole Sharknado <laughs> if you want to have a great time Zombies and Zombies 2 Zombies? Zombies. It's zoom? about a zoo where all the animals get infected with a zombie virus. So get out. Then there's oh, two movies. They're fantastic. God. Oh, that sounds fantastic. That sounds so They're great. so stupid. They're so down. good, though. Zombies. I love it. I watched Lava Lantula last night. Yeah. Lava Lantula. There's a sequel to that as well. Yes. Yes, there is. And it's more fantastic. Steve Gutenberg. Yes. Um, <clears throat> any other or. That's all I got. Okay. I think I've said enough. I don't. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything I watch this kind. I mean, I know I watch movies. Oh, only really one comes to mind. Um, I uh, because I've been editing nonstop because somehow my editing schedule got really fucked up. But I did have time to watch one movie, and uh, that was Time After Time with uh, Malcolm McDowell. Uh, the dude from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. He was also in The Omen. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the guy that got his head cut off by the pane of glass. Oh, David Warner. Oh. David Warner. Mm -hmm. And it had... Crap. Something Steengard, a lady. Curly black hair. Mary Steenburgen. Oh, that sounds right. Was she in What's she Eating was... Gilbert Grape? Yes. As the horny uh, grocery store mom? Yes. Yes, that was the other one. Um, so I watched that, and first off, I think it's because of my experience with uh, Clockwork Orange, but young Malcolm McDowell immediately makes my feet itch. Um, he makes me uncomfortable. Uh, he was great in it. David uh, Warner was fine, I guess. He was kind of in it. Do you guys know what... Have you guys seen this before? I, I, didn't, I realized I didn't talk about the plot much. So mm -hmm. this is a movie where H.G. Wells mm -hmm. travels through time because Jack the Ripper has traveled to 1979 and he has to follow him to stop his reign of terror. Malcolm McDowell plays H.G. Wells. David Warner plays uh, Jack the Ripper. Oh. And uh, Lady, Horny Grocery Store Lady plays... Uh, so he when he gets to the future, he meets this woman and falls in love with her. This movie has such a... I was hooked. As soon as I heard what the premise of this was, I was like, fucking A, like Back to the Future meets From Hell? I'm 100% on board. It is literally an hour and 48 minutes of Malcolm McDowell reacting to stuff in the future and being like, ooh, this is fun. It's like, he goes to McDonald's and he's like, oh, a French fry is just a chip. And I'm like, oh, okay, that, yeah, that's that's kind of funny. <laughs> 45 minutes later, he's still doing this with stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like Coca-Cola, I remember when yeah. there was cocaine in this. There was cocaine in this. <laughs> 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 this clock is showing magical numbers that change on their own. I'm like, holy <laughs> fuck, it's been an hour and 10 minutes. We get it, Malcolm McDowell. You're in the future. There is a serial killer murdering women, and you're <laughs> talking about a fucking Big Mac. 
Yeah. I love it. I want to see it now. <laughs> it uh, is all right, I guess. And I was so tired by the end of it. I was so tired of Malcolm McDowell fucking doing his future shit. I didn't even notice how they got rid of Jack the Ripper. It it, it, it was oh, in the no. time span of like 30 seconds. And all of a sudden, I'm like, where'd David Warner go? And Jen's like, oh, they used this key thing. And he disappeared. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Anyway, long story short, I guess if you're... If you want to see a really... And then the movie has the audacity to have a uh, a scroll... Like just a like what do we call it? Like a title card or something at the end of text saying how HG Wells predicted all this stuff that was gonna happen in the future. And I was like, is this movie fucking insinuating that HG Wells actually traveled through time? And Jen's like, Yeah, I think it is. And I'm like, you gotta be <laughs> to have the ball to put me through that for the last hour and 50 minutes and then to actually insinuate that maybe H.G. Wells's time machine, the one that he wrote the book about, actually worked. And he used it to fight off Jack the Ripper. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Fuck, I don't know. Two and a half out of five. It was all right. <laughs> so does that mean H.G. Wells in real life predicted Big Macs? You know what? No, that wasn't part of the. That was not part of the title card at the end. Well, what this the hell? Bullshit. This is all bullshit. Like you think you talk about that, right? Right? Two all beef patty, special sauce, cheese, lettuce, onions. You think he would? Seen fun. Yeah, you think he'd predict the recipe? Pure he could have made bank. Can you imagine there being Big Macs in like 1886. Oh my god, people yeah. have lost their mind. Oh, anyway, we've postponed long enough. Nobody else has got anything they're going to be talking about. Yeah, let's. Dive into Amityville 3D. And since yes. Clint is our special guest of the evening, and yes. he's the only one who's fucking excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to let you go first, buddy. What do you got? What do you want to talk about? What I want to talk about, I want to talk about the ridiculous opening scene. Like, and I don't even mean just the seance. I, I mean the actual mm -hmm. title cards they were throwing up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything about this was was ridiculous and like um, like haunted house looking, you know, like stuff that you it, 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 to me, it was all kind of like, um, I don't know, it, it was almost a caricature at this point. Um, like they 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 did like the um, Amityville logo 3D coming at your face. You know, they they gave us this music that sounded like it was straight out of the Friday the 13th. I actually looked at the credits to find out if 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 like uh, Harry Manfredini. Uh, Manfredini did this and he did not. But I was like, this guy must have like studied his work or like <laughs> like learned from him or something, because it seriously reminded me of something like that. I expected to see Jason sitting off in the bushes. Um, but um, they spent an awfully long time on the house. Um, which seems to have been uh, a theme throughout the movie. Anytime they had like any dead space whatsoever, I swear they did like a view of the outside of the house just so you could remember where you were. Um, <laughs> but uh, you forgot. yeah, but uh, yeah, this, the seance scene, um, I didn't quite know what was happening at first. And I think that was really the point. Um they went in there as this couple who was uh, wanting to make contact with like their, their dead son or something like that. And, um, and they got the old lady basically to get herself all worked up and moan and act like she's having, you know, an orgasm in the chair. I don't know what was happening there. Um, and we get this like glowing green blob thing, go through the, through the room, which immediately reminded me of like ghostbusters or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and it was pretty comical, actually. I don't know if they were going for like a, a comedy element um, when they did it, but they started taking like all this flash photography inside there. You see this dude dressed up like a ninja holding a fish rod with this like uh, with this big like uh, I don't even know what you call that. It, like like one of those scrubby sponges that you have in the shower. That's what the hell it looked like. Uh, he was carrying on the end of this uh, 
this stick. It looked like he had that. It looked like he had a big thing of steel wool on the end of a fishing rod. <laughs> yeah, something thought, like that. I thought it looked like a big ball of saran wrap with a glow stick in it. <laughs> oh, okay. That that might have been cooler. I don't know. But uh or like cheesecloth on the outside or something. I have no idea. It's like uh definitely, definitely low tech. And um Yeah. So but just to find out that they were um uh investigators of uh fraud and this was them uh doing their reporting and exposing it so uh i don't know where i'm going with that um i i i felt it was a little cheesy little hokey i i didn't know what your opinions of it were but uh feel free to chime in on it <laughs> 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 well, quickly, I think, no, I think you said it. No, I, I'm glad you brought up the opening because I do feel it is like, this is the setup for the movie. Like, it's not getting better than this, folks. Like, if yes. you're, if you're tapping, like, if you're feeling like you're going to tap out because of what has just transpired here, you're best just to tap out. Like, we're five minutes in, you can probably get your money back from the guy at the front de uh, desk of the theater. You know, take yeah. your popcorn home. Throw on the first movie again. Have a good time. Um, this is not good. I don't even know. Like, I can't even give it the respect of using big words. <laughs> and the, the rest of the movie from here on out is trying to build on such a flimsy setup. And the whole movie just begins to crumble around itself because of this. That's that's the outtake. That's the input I have on this opening. Nicole, you got anything? Part three. Well, it's um somebody else buys the house, floor in the basement opens up, people die at the end. Like that <laughs> that that movie it could have been 12 seconds long. Yeah. It just it, other than the you know young Meg Ryan and you know doing a seance in the in the attic with uh, it was just I mean the effects were awful. It's this is one of the lowest rated movies I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. And I normally enjoy Tony Roberts. He's he's a good goofy you know character actor, but he's he does not hold it together. He doesn't nothing holds this movie together at all. At all, I, yeah. I, I know the idea was to get his character at the house and and give him an opportunity to purchase the house really cheap. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just felt this was a really weird mechanic to make that happen. That he's some investigative reporter and he's exposing like a couple of frauds, you know, in the original Amityville house that are somehow renting it and living there and performing these seances right mm -hmm. like if the movie had opened up with uh tony roberts like we get that scene with tony roberts talking to the realtor outside mm -hmm. of the house and they're talking about like the realtors all like i can't be associated with these people da, da, da. could we not have just started the movie with tony roberts talking to him and being interested mm -hmm. in doing an investigative piece on the house mm -hmm. yeah and from there you know finding out hey it's a steal i can buy yeah. this and add in the divorce element, which they did later anyway. Yeah, there is yeah. really you know, no reason to have this opening other than to show off, like, because clearly that green ball was supposed to be like right in our faces, <laughs> like if we were watching this in the theater in 1983. Um, yeah, it's just this movie, and unfortunately, this is going to be a, a theme moving forward. These movies are really stretching to feel like amityville movies like the uh the house now is like christ i don't even know how much more how many more movies the house is even in this might be the last one that actually features well other than the remake that actually features the house as a whole yeah well it blows up at the end of every movie right and it magically reappears like christine it just rebuilt Which, uh, itself. it just rebuilt itself <laughs> yeah <laughs> this movie though it looked like the house really got fucked up <laughs> this one yeah. it did yeah kind of did but it looked like yeah. that in the end of part two as well it blew yeah. up there was fires and then boom it's fine yeah. 
Yep, the only Spoiler. thing that was left was the flies in the jacuzzi. The exactly. That's why the house is back basement. in part four. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Yeah. Yep. Um, although I did I did find it interesting to note when I was kind of uh, gearing up for this and and doing a little bit of checking and researching um, that um, like there was a lawsuit that basically they had to explicitly say that this was not connected to the previous two movies. Oh yeah. yeah. And I'm pretty sure you see that in the, uh, it's either in the opening or the closing credits, don't you? Yeah. Um, and, uh, because I think it was uh, a lawsuit that was brought up by the Lutz family. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. So um, the, the director of this movie in order to avoid being sued, um, I think had to, explicitly uh, explain that it was not connected to the other two movies. Yes, and it felt that... unconnected, if I'm being honest. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's there is no it's connection. connected to a lot of things. <laughs> a good chance, good acting, good effects. It wasn't connected to anything. Yeah, because even as shitty as Amityville 2 was, at least we, could, we agreed the acting was actually yes, anywhere from decent yes. to quite good. The cast was good in part two. But um, yeah, this everything was, else was just fucking dog shit. <laughs> oh, it was awful. So, but um, the uh, the oh shit, where was it going? Oh yeah, so no, that lawsuit. I did look into that a bit. So what had happened was with Amityville two and focusing more on the defense or the whatever is it, the Montelli or Monta? I can't remember Montessori. That's a school. <laughs> um, Mont anyway, like Monticelli or something. Yeah, but um. I guess the Lutzes, the George Lutz specifically, had wanted to... There was a uh, sequel to the book that dealt with uh, the Lutzes moving, like getting out of the house, moving in with, uh, I believe it was Kathy's mother. I read I read this book when I was younger. And the evil had followed them into this new location. Uh, it's actually a pretty good book. Would have made for a better movie than what we got for Amityville 2. And that's the movie that George wanted them to make was based off of this sequel book but the, instead they went with the uh you know the the defeo murders prequel so uh george had attempted to sue back then when the second movie came out so that brings up what clint said with this one um and this is where moving forward we find out that you can basically any movie can be called an amityville movie because you can't copyright the name of a town right okay um which is why we have amityville thanksgiving amityville movie house yada 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 uh so as long as they in this case with part three specifically state it has nothing to do with the lutzes they have no grounds to sue um and which is why they had tried to sue for the second one because they were still trying to argue it was part of the amityville story that's my I'm little rant on that. If, there you go. If they brought up the Lutz name in this one, because I know Meg Ryan was talking about the no. original family. No, she mentioned the DeFeos briefly. Right. And mm -hmm. described the murders, but. And it, then she it, just. Intentionally, they left out the Lutzes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This movie is an hour and 33 minutes. And for some reason, it feels like it's pushing the two hour mark. Yeah. Yeah. And um, part two was like that, too. And part two I think felt we, like it was three hours long. It was awful. Right? But I think we mentioned this too when we were uh, doing our watch along together. This movie also kind of feels like it ends uh, with the death of uh, uh, Full House Lady. Can't remember her name. Lori Loughlin. Lori Loughlin. Mm -hmm. um, and we still have 20 minutes of movie after that. Yeah. And we get this whole, he goes to Robert Joy's workforce and only at this point now, despite the fact that several people have died mm -hmm. under mysterious circumstances like candy clark mm -hmm. gets burnt in her car i that is you know what though that is one great part of this movie i love when the the construction worker or whatever it is opens the door and the skeleton just kind of Dude, raises its arms and, <laughs> and the entire inside of the car is not burned no but she oh, there's is there's only a burnt skeleton there's no burn on the inside of the car and then the car decides to light on fire again. And it just spontaneously combusts. And <laughs> why are you doing it again, bro? They're like she's already dead. Oh, <laughs> Who's this for? God. Um, I feel like this movie was marked by not bad effects. I want to say lame effects. Yeah. 
because like uh, from the first guy who gets killed, you know, with the swarm of flies, I mean, they basically looked like animated flies that that were just kind of like painted onto each frame or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They looked like dots. They didn't look like flies. And then they started like pasting all these M&Ms to his face like like they were swarming oh. him and, and he was <laughs> dying. You know what I mean? Or or raisinets or something. I don't know what they were. But, <laughs> raisinets. Um, yeah. The most evil of all candies. Yeah. And they wanted to give us like one close up like 3D fly that looked absolutely ridiculous, you know, for all the people that are at the theater watching with the glasses on. Um, you know, to actually uh, one that I skipped earlier where he like almost fell in the well and like the it was the slowest fall of all time. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like um it's like when you see somebody like losing their footing on ice or something. That's how slow this fall was. And and it looked like the boards like bent before they actually broke. It, it, it was goddamn. It was so lame. <laughs> or or what about when the chick came up from the, uh, the basement, you know, and got that blasted like... with the Arctic air like she pissed off Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat or something like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, I'm like, what is this? This is so stupid. Like, <laughs> you brought it like the in the finale there when shit like hits the fan, and you can tell they've thrown all the budget into this fucking fake ass looking snow and wind effects. Yeah, mm -hmm. I gotta say though, when that one fucking camera girl <laughs> got blasted <laughs> by that fucking door, <laughs> that was great. That was that was the best yeah. kill in the movie. Yeah, yeah, and thrown half through that window. That was pretty yeah. good. I remember I was talking to some friends while I was watching it with you guys, and I, they're like, "Oh, what are you watching?" I'm like, "Well, I'm watching Amityville 3D," and they're like, "How is it?" Like, it's it's fucking terrible, guys. Like, this is I don't even know why I'm doing this. <laughs> and then all that shit started happening. I, I told them like, "You know what? After the last five minutes, I take everything back. I fucking love this movie because <laughs> <laughs> when that girl went through that window and you saw her legs sticking out from the door." <laughs> Why couldn't the whole movie have been this? Yeah, yeah. I feel like like the best effect that they had, you know, was probably the thing that came out of the well at the very end, and it was on screen for like ten <laughs> seconds. Yeah, like all that time and effort and money that they put into making that thing look as good as it possibly could to give you the three D fire effect on you know Dude Ball's face, and it's on screen for literally ten seconds, and it disappears. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the big frozen thing, it came up and froze, right? Out of the well, or was that part two? Am I getting them? Confused? No, that was it. No, it came no, up. You're right. okay, yeah, and my first, I'm like, what is Han Solo frozen in carbonite now? In the in the Amityville basement, I, so bad. So yeah, that bad. didn't make sense to me. Why? Was hell froze things, over. Was that? It? Yeah, hell must have froze <laughs> over. Mm -hmm. Just a big thing of ice. Came even up. the even the devil was just like, fuck this. I'm not dealing with this crap anymore. Yeah. These people yeah. are too stupid to stay out of this house. Fuck it. Yeah. Sealing it off. <laughs> I was appreciative of the fact that we got baby pumpkin head again in part three, even if it was only for 10 seconds, because that does connect this movie to the second one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that what did uh, it? <laughs> that I'm just like, oh, hey, at least they're trying for some continuity here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, but again, it, it also reminded me of the second one. So I was kind of like, hey, you know, that's fun. But also, you know, fuck that. <laughs> I got I got nothing else for this movie. This All right, is just I'll terrible. give you anything else. I'll give you one more. I okay. I, re I really feel like they didn't know how to end this movie, which is why they borrowed from another movie. Like they basically almost literally turned the end of this movie into Poltergeist. Mm -hmm. Like they brought in like the paranormal investigative team. They had the cameras in the infrared or whatever the hell they had set up everywhere, you know, and they're taking readings everywhere and they're, um, and, and inexplicably for some reason, even though they know she's going down to the well, the, the, the Elliot West guy goes running down ahead of her and stands in front of the well. And he's like, don't let her come any closer. You know, we, we got to bring it out. We got to bring the evil up. Like he's trying to make it give birth. I mean, it literally looked like he was like leaning there, like a doctor getting ready to catch a baby, you know, coming out of this well. And um, just, just so that he could get killed right there at the very end. Like I had no idea what, what they were going for with that, but it, it looked awful. <laughs> 
now that you described it like that, that's all I can think of now. Like it just like he's waiting for it to give birth, and all of a sudden it just shoots out this giant icicle. Yeah, I was birth hole. <laughs> I was half except expecting him to say, "Breathe, okay, now push." You know what I mean? Because that's what this looked like, and he was all excited about it. You know, we gotta get the evil up. We gotta get the evil up. You know? <laughs> get the evil up. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So when you uh, this movie closes on uh, as Nicole and you had mentioned, like the Avenue House fucking blows up again, mm -hmm. which it's been shooting ice for the last five minutes. Like everything's freezing, everything's going. Why the fuck did it blow up? Like why does the house keep blowing up? I think the house blew up at the end because it was tired of this movie too, and it's self-destructive. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the Avenueville house, like this poor house just has to keep getting blown up. <laughs> Had nothing to do with the original event. Right. Uh, the only other thing I want to touch on just before we go is uh, this was a 3D movie. Um, we've mentioned a few crappy little 3D effects sprinkled here and there. Did you guys uh, get to catch, like, because obviously there was Amityville 3, there was Friday the 13th Part 3, there was Jaws 3D, there was... Uh, Parasite with uh, what's her name from uh, Labyrinth? Fuck the Jennifer, the Jennifer, Jennifer Connelly? Connelly. Okay, wasn't she in? I think she was in Parasite. Anyway, Parasite was also a three D movie. Um, did you guys catch any of these when they initially came out? No. In the theater? Yeah. Yes. Which uh, ones? I did my dad took me to see Jaws 3D. Okay. Oh, Did that 80s 3D work? It. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't tell you because the movie started and the first 3D effect was just two minutes in and it was the frog jumping out mm. at you and the frog jumped out at me and it scared me so bad I took my glasses off and watched the rest of the movie without my glasses. So everything was double vision. Excellent. Because the frog scared me that bad. <laughs> <laughs> So Damn. I really can't tell you if Joe's three. The frog worked. And it was there you go. scary. Just scary as fuck. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. Kermit ruined that movie for you. He did that fucker. <laughs> I I do feel out of all the 3D movies though, this is the one I go back to the least. Like I fuck I love Jaws 3. I'm unapologetic. I unironically love Jaws 3. Uh, I, despite the 3D effects looking, and it almost adds to the charm of it. You know what I mean? Like those okay. shitty 3D effects just kind of help it pop a little more. Um, Friday the 13th, part three, that soundtrack fucking slaps. Um, and the movie itself, like it's a well loved sequel of the Friday the 13th franchise. This movie does not hold any of those accolades that the other two ones I just mentioned did. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. Um, I truly feel that this was the beginning of the end for the 3D uh, movement. Like, can we think of any movies after this that were really... Like I mentioned Parasite uh, and the, the three main ones. There, there wasn't a lot after this. This was kind of the... Beginning of the end Valentine's of it. It's yeah. the only one I can think of. That's but it. that's again part of the modern 3D resurgence. Yeah. So as far as like the the 80s, um, 80s, yeah. 80s three... Was it only these four movies? There's gotta be more. There's no, gotta be more. I'm sure there was more. Um but they were probably... on the street. I was gonna um, say part six. Were... part six. That was in yeah, 94, though. Again, that was uh I did see that in the theater too. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to own a DVD copy of it back in the day that actually had the, it came with 3D glasses. Oh, mine does too. It yeah. didn't work. Yeah, it did not work though. Yeah, no, it doesn't. The box set came with the with the 3D glasses for part six and no, it doesn't work. Yeah, that's the one I used to have. But now yeah. I got the shitty Blu-ray box set that does not come with the 3D glasses. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, did, I saw that one in the theater too. It worked yeah. out what it was, you know. Yeah, it was fun, I guess. Yeah. You got to see Yappa Koto. Try to tell somebody to put on 3D glasses and be serious about it. Exactly. Um, 
But yeah, I don't have a lot more to say about this movie. I don't know if you guys do. Feel free to chime in. <laughs> Otherwise, I think we're kind of winding down here and we should probably get to rating this son of a bitch. I think mm -hmm. that's fair. I think uh, it's only fair that we let the guests go first in this situation. Clint, uh, oh. we do it out of 10 here. I think uh, your system of rating does allow for that. So yeah, yeah. If you want to explain your system and then give us your rating, go right ahead. Yeah. Um, my, my system uh, for rating uh, is just about 30, 30 things that I look for, you know, whether it, you know, be like uh soundtrack sound effects, you know, um, uh, prop choices like uh, lighting, editing, you know what I mean? Like if it felt choppy or anything like that, just I, about 30, 30 points that I look at. So if I thought it was good, I give it a point. And so I I make my uh, fraction out of 30, turn that into a percentage, and then, then I reduce that to my, my number out of 10. Uh, I didn't do that this time. Um, <laughs> I decided I'd just wing it for you guys. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to uh, give it my initial rating, uh, and then I'm actually going to raise my rating slightly because this movie made me laugh. Um, so um, I was going to give this a 3 out of 10. I normally don't rate things that low. Um, but uh, n after I said that, I laughed my ass off about certain things in this movie and i was able to sit there and chat with nice folks like you and make a ton of jokes about it while i was watching it and have a really good time so i'm gonna bump it up to a three and a half That's so right. for me amityville 3d gets a 3.5 much like the effects it's yes. three with that little bit of extra <laughs> you know, a little bit more it was the fly man that got it the extra the radioactive half, fly. half a point yeah <laughs> that and um Robert Joyce scream when his face got burned off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Who's next? Nicole, you're up next. <laughs> uh, my system, I actually stole from Clint, though mine is not as intricate as his because he just explained his and I have no idea what he just said. Um, <laughs> I take... Uh, just six, I take six basic points in a movie. Um, I don't get too intricate with it. It's acting, cast, story, effects, opening, and ending. And for this one, <laughs> I, I do one, one to ten on all of them and then just average them out with the six. So my rating for Amityville 3D is... <laughs> 1.5. Jesus and Christ. The only reason the only reason I even gave it that was the girl going through the window with the door. That was that was entertaining enough and I, I would rather I would rather chew broken glass than watch this movie Ooh, again. All right. <laughs> oh my god. I love it. Love it. All right. Well, I'm like you two. But sorry. What was that, Nicole? No, I'm just <laughs> I'm laughing at Clint. Oh. <laughs> well, unlike you two, and much like this movie, I have no system. Um, I'm just fucking winging it. Uh, so, my rating is still out of 10, much like you guys. Uh, and I give this, I can't believe this, but I'm the most generous out of the three of us. I'm giving this movie a 4 out of 10. Wow. wow. Um, I absolutely do not enjoy it. Um, it is a very much below average movie. Uh, but having said that, there are moments to have fun with. Uh, we do have goopy 3D effects. We've got the skeleton jumping out of the car. We've got that stupid fucking fly. Um, I absolutely love when baby pumpkin head <laughs> burns off Robert Joy's face and he screams. <laughs> um, so good. And I mean, I, much like Nicole's 1.5, like I, it bumped it up a point for me when that girl got smashed. That, that's by the that only door. reason this, I gave it what I did. This movie was a three out of 10 until that happened. <laughs> it gave it a whole other <laughs> point. Um, it is. My, now, I do have the benefit of having seen a good chunk of this franchise. Um, there, thankfully, 
is some good stuff to look forward to. I do find a lot of the sequels moving forward are much more enjoyable than this one. Um, but after the next five movies or so, that tapers off drastically. Um, but this movie still is fun and it is a good time with the right people and the right conversation. So, yeah. and it didn't make me feel like I needed to take a shower after I watched it. So it automatically gets another bump over part two for that. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, four out of 10. I don't hate it. I don't like it, but you can do worse. Not this by is true. Much. Not by much, but you could. <laughs> well, that just about wraps it up for this episode of the Amityville Retrospective on the Scream Until You Like It podcast. Uh, Clint, you got anything you want to plug? Let people know where they can find you, all that good stuff. Ha! Well, um, you can find us on the old Facebooks. Um, I still have the Amityville Horror Podcast page up, which I use basically just for sharing of um, movies and and uh, horror community stuff, mostly with the the indie scene. Uh, we have the Scream Until You Like It podcast um, uh, on YouTube. We also have the Scream Until You Like It Facebook page. Um, and, uh, of course, we still do our Saturday night hangouts. So if you're ever looking for uh, a bunch of friends getting together to, to talk and laugh about uh, some movies that they, they saw um, on a random horror movie topic, uh, we're normally doing that Saturday nights. Uh, I've moved the time slot to eight o'clock. So usually that's streaming on um, both YouTube channels now. And of course the Hammondyville horror Facebook page. That's it. Man. Fantastic. Nicole, what you got for us? Uh, just also scream until you like it. You know, I, I plug it every time. It's uh, we're also we have the Instagram page and we're also on TikTok. And the Hamneyville Hangout, I am looking very much forward to this Saturday. We are doing when animals attack. So this is going to be a fun one. So if you're into it, tune in, please. And as always, if you for whatever reason, like hearing my voice. Um, you can also check me out over at the Hormonal Werewolves, where we have a YouTube show. We talk about movies, new and old, good and bad, everything in between, sometimes whatever the fuck we want. I usually keep myself a little more quiet over there than I am here, but uh, there's still some great time to be had. Uh, look forward to our most recent release of Ghost Story, where I learned how to edit smiley faces over dicks. <laughs> <laughs> a skill everyone proud. should know i'm pretty proud of that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but that uh that about wraps it up uh from us oh and uh sorry it does not wrap it up for us i am going to be dropping a uh best of moment at the end of this episode with a recent interview we did with uh matt skinner big time indie horror movie fan and uh producer for the upcoming uh, indie horror project, Air Fryer Slaughter, about an evil, uh, what's that word? Sentient air fryer that uh, we guarantee it bites off a nipple, folks. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'll be dropping uh, Best Of. Uh, Clint and I just did an interview with him for that, and uh, I got a couple of clips I'm going to drop at the end of this just to get your uh, whistles wetted. And uh, if you want to check out the entire interview, Clint, uh, where are they going to be able to find that? Uh, you should be able to find that on the Scream Until You Like It YouTube channel. Um, and we will probably also turn that into an audio format so you can find it wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Fantastic. All right. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of the Amityville Retrospective. We look forward to doing this again for Amityville 4, The Evil Escapes. It's got Patty Duke, folks. Yeah. Good time. <laughs> Great. But until then, I've been Ryan. And I am Nicole. And I'm Clint. And remember. Smile, you son of a bitch. <laughs>
Yep. She won't let you down. I love it. Yeah. And every movie needs a sexy clown. Right? Of course it does. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter what it's about. That's right. Philadelphia <laughs> should have had a sexy clown. <laughs> it should have. It should have. I've never seen that movie. I just know what it's about. <laughs> That's the clip. I, I have seen it, and I could tell you it does need a sexy clown. <laughs>